Now that our point cloud file has been attached and clipped, we can switch over to a three-dimensional viewing angle and see that we can complete our clipping operation by restricting the point cloud in the Z direction this way. This combined with using the real-time sliders here to control the point density of the cloud that we wish to look at, along with the auto update functionality, will control the resolution that we'll see when we zoom in and how quickly the point cloud will be updated and to what level of detail we can actually view when we zoom in. So let's go ahead and zoom in and see what starts to emerge. Now that we're zoomed in on our point cloud, it would be nice to have some context here in terms of color so we can actually see what we're looking at rather than just a, a collection of, of white points that we can start to see some outlines of trees and some building geometry here, but it really is difficult to make out exactly what's going on. So the first thing we need to do is make sure that your hardware acceleration is turned on and that can be seen down here in the system tray. And then we'll switch from 2D wireframe to a visual style that connotates being able to look at it conceptually. I'm going to go ahead and use realistic in this case. And since I have my automatic updating turned on, my display refreshes and we start to actually get an idea of what's going on with the convenience store now, being able to see trees and buildings. We can now zoom, perform other types of functions, just as if we were looking at, at regular geometry. We just happen to be looking at a point cloud instead. And the other thing to take away from this is that any of the ribbon type modifications that we've done throughout this series on point clouds can also be performed via properties. So we can see here by selecting on the gripping point of the point cloud that we can control over here whether we're showing clip geometry and that would be analogous to this control within the ribbon or whether we're exposing color information as we would see up here under true color or whether we're using grayscale and intensity information if the point cloud you're using actually has intensity information embedded in it. This one does not. So what we've seen here is the ability throughout this series to bring in point clouds, process them, bring them up into the drawing as an AutoCAD attached entity, clip the geometry, and finally to turn it into some sort of a conceptually visible 3D geometry as we've seen here using visual styles. So it's pretty easy to work with the point clouds. They're much more like XREFs now and the workflow should be very familiar to you 